everybody, it's Jean here, Jean True Love from True Love Quotes for You. I hope you're all doing well. I'm okay. My toe, actually, my broken toe is acting up a little bit. Um, so I'm just taking a little bit of a rest from my latest project, which if you've been following is my one block wonder quilt. Looks a little bit of a <laughs> all over the place. Um, I've gotten to this point, if you've been following, I have a playlist on how I'm making this one block wonder quilt with a panel. I was saying, again, I repeat myself, but I quite enjoy the panel because for me, it gives my eye a relief from the kaleidoscope of patterns and colors of how we actually cut our blocks out, as you will see in the previous videos. Now, I was cutting, my, my panel is 14 by 21. Every single quilt that you've, or going to embark on, size-wise will depend on how large your panel is, if you're doing a panel. My friend Jen is doing a massive panel. She has made very large blocks. She cut her strips, again, refer back to whatever video, part one or two, of the cutting instructions. She cut her triangles and her strips very large. So it, it, her block, her panel, which is very large, has very large blocks around it. My panel here, again, is 14 by 21. I cut three inch strips, the width of my panel, and that, and then I had cut my triangles out of those strips coming up with six triangles for each block as it were and I ended up with 42 blocks my blocks being a hexagonal the blocks right now are in two halves they are not put together because of the way we're going to be doing our quilt. Now, why I've done it this way is I've needed, a, um, I have a very, very busy um, weekend ahead of me. I needed a little bit of a break, but I just wanted to show you where my, uh, my mind process is for the next step of this quilt. It's not been hard. Confusing, yes, if you don't keep track of it. Absolutely, absolutely very confusing. Quite a lot of people were saying, you tried to show us how to chain piece. They did one block at a time, which makes much, much sense. Either way, I actually sort of did it both ways. My friend Jen did one block at a time, the two halves of one block. But to keep the, these in order, I just wanted to show you how I'm sort of going to attack or going to uh, tackle the next part of my quilt here. I have uh, sort of separated my blocks, which are an uneven amount. There's however many here, here, and then a, a lot over there, as you can see, in the colors of my panel. Okay? What I've done is I've just taken my blocks over to my, my um, surface, and I've just sort of put them into piles of the colors of my panel and as you can see my lady here my dancing ukrainian lady here on my panel she has a lot of cream and green in the um wildlife garden that she's in lots of creams and pale greens and a bit of yellows and little tiny blue flowers and that yielded for me quite a lot of blocks over here her um her costume her bright oranges and reds and bright yellows of the costume yielded just uh, several. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, about eight blocks. And then the sky, which is over here, which I'm sh showing you, the blue and the ribbon, has only yielded about one, two, three, four, five blocks. Okay? And then the sunflowers, which are dotted on each side here, has yielded this lot many blocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to try to figure out, and that's for the next video, because I have to, I'm, I'm busy and I'm having to take a, a little bit of a breather from this to try to wrap my head around it. Um, I'm going to figure out 42 blocks, how many blocks I need to have under around my central panel. Now, the, the beauty of this quilt is, if you have a panel, there's no reason why you have to put the panel in the center. This is where your artistic uh, flair or your um, experimentation comes into play. So my if quilt you... here is going to be a wall hanging, a rather small wall hanging, as I was telling you in the very beginning. Jen's quilt with her large panel is, and with her large blocks around it is going to be a, probably a large bed quilt, bed size quilt. So 
again, people say, well, how big is it going to end up? I have no idea. I do know that your, as I was saying, your artistic impression comes into this. However you want to uh, plan out your quilt. What I mean is that is I'm, you know, you see this center panel. It doesn't have to be in the center. Your panel could be asymmetrical. Your panel could be over here and you build your, your blocks over that way. Your panel could be up here, the very top up here. And then your panel, your, your blocks can go around. So there's no real rhyme or reason. I'm, I'm, I'm putting my thinking cap on right now. I'm not quite sure if I want my panel centered. I'm, I'm stepping away from the project just for now. Again, as I said, I'm very, very busy this weekend. <clears throat> and I'm going to be thinking about where my blocks are going to be put. Obviously, I want my blue sky somewhere around the blue sky and the flower somewhere. But because I have so many of the cream and the, the, uh, the cream and the green of the floral down here, that can be sort of peppered in amongst it because I have more of them. So I'm having, again, as I said, to put my thinking cap on and to come up with what I think is a, a solution to the next part of my, of my um, quilt making here. It's been a, it's been a fascinating project. It's been it's been confusing as I said, but not hard, not hard at all. Now, the one thing that I was trying to find out is how I place my blocks on my quilt here, on my panel, how I place them. Obviously, my blocks have been constructed I'll take I'm this off. Showing you in two halves. Okay, so there's my kaleidoscope block, and it's in two halves. No center seam yet. So I'm sort of putting them together with a pin to sort of imitate where the quarter inch seam will be. Okay? Because again, as I said before, we're going to be sewing these in rows this way. Now again, if, if these are two different blocks, the rows, how we're sewing them, there's the seam right there. So we're going to be building on those rows when we place our all different colored blocks around our quilt however you want to do that so right now I'm going to just stand back and I'm going to try to figure out where exactly I want to place my blocks oops <laughs> <It fell. laughs> so um, as I said, I'm, I'm busy this weekend. I wanted to just say hello to you guys. My toe is hurting just a little bit, but I'm feeling so much better. Um, my friend Jen was like, I'm so glad you're having to explain it, not me. <laughs> because as I said, I've not done this before, but it's been fun. I've, I've enjoyed it and it's going to be a real pretty, real, real pretty. Now, the one thing I do want to address is I don't love... I said it from the very beginning and you're going to go, what? I don't love the... Um, as I keep saying the word cacophony of colors around my panel okay and having the square or the rectangular panel so what am I going to use I think I think when the at the end of the day I'm going to be using <laughs> to delineate my panel from the rest maybe that's completely uh M minusing out the fact that this is a kaleidoscope but my brain needs to see my panel and so what I'm going to be using is hopefully you can see that I'm going to be using a rickrack and my rickrack has all of the colors of my panel and so I'm going to be th there's there's not there's going to be a you're going to see my panel in the middle or wherever it is. You're going to see my panel surrounded by my my rectangular rickrack and then my pattern. I think that's what I'm going to do. I did see a quote on Pinterest, a one block wonder kaleidoscope quote, and the panel had a little tiny border around it. So you saw the panel and then you saw the patterns. So I you know me. I'm a one-trick pony. I love my rickrack. I have this in my stash here. And, and I thought, oh my goodness, it has all of the colors of the rainbow for my, for my, in my panel. Those lovely bright colors. So I might be doing that. So that might be something that you either like the idea of or, or, or not. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, like to, I, I didn't love, what I'm saying is I didn't love the, the um, cutting off of the panel. And then the kaleidoscope.
I think if you had, if you did this project with one whole, uh, without a panel, with just the floral, say, then the whole thing blends into each other with the kaleidoscopes. But with the panel, I want to be able to see my panel and then the beautiful blocks around it. And then I think I'm going to fairly need a very strong binding. There's no reason, actually, why you couldn't put a border on this quilt. There's no reason whatsoever. If you wanted to calm things down, then by all means you can put a border around it. Maybe of a, 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 of a pattern that reads more of a solid. Just a small border to calm it down. To frame it. Because it is just an explosion of color. But that will come in my next video. This is just to say hello to you. My toe's hurting me today. <laughs> it's not my toe that I, I sew with. Um, I'm going to go over I'm going to go over and see um, babysitting some of the little grandkids today. Um, Maxwell and I are going to go over. But I just wanted to say hello to you guys. And I'm working on it. But right now <sighs> my head is blown. And I'm just going to take it steady. So I do hope you're having a lovely day. So again, I'm thank you very, very much, folks, for following along. And as always, love from the true loves. Okay, see ya.